Okay. Good evening, everyone. This is the Conservation Commission acting as the Inland Wetlands Commission, uh, meeting of April 7th, 2021. Uh, we have myself, Jen Hahus, uh, Nelson North, Luke Thomas, Dabney Bowen, and Charlie Rowan. Um, we, are, we are a quorum and we don't need to nominate any alternates. We don't have any. Okay. Um, Roman numeral one, call to order. I just did that, thank you. Roman numeral two, appointment of alternates, all set. Roman numeral three, bills and communications. Um, approval of meeting minutes of March 3rd, 2021. Do you have a motion? Motion. Luke? To approve, yeah, motion to second. approve. Second, anyone? No, second. Discussion? Comments? Hi, Charlie. Okay, all those in favor? Mm -hmm. Aye. Okay. Mm -hmm. Opposed? Okay, we're the number all 3B, approval of reporting Secretary's bill of March 3rd, 2021. Do we have a motion to approve? Sure. Approved. Second. Okay. Discussion? I think we want to pay her. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Roman numeral 3C, search committee for hiring new conservation director status. Um, Patty Dwyer of SCR um, met with Dabney, Kevin Gumper and I. Uh, was it last week, Dabney, or the week before? I think it was the week before. It was the week before. Week before. Yeah. yeah. And we talked at length about uh, how to get who, on the speaker. Who should be discussed? Who should be part of the discussion and who she would interview um, for the qualification for the job. The point, um, get it on she speaker. has done quite a few interviews nope. and um, she's putting together the recruitment brochure, which she believes yeah. will be done by the end of the week. And then um, the, uh, the executive search will be launched pretty quickly after the search committee uh, approves the uh, recruitment details. Okay, Dabney, is there anything you want to add? Nope, I think we're good. Okay. Okay, any questions, anyone? No. Okay, Roman numeral four, Inland Wetlands Legal Enforcement Action, continued from October 7th, 2020, November 4th, 2020, and December 2nd, 2020. Show cause violation hearing, cease, desist, and correct order. 1081 Reading Road, Abby M. Taylor, Trustee, Assessor's Map 221, Parcel 29, Generalization of Stream Course and Filling of Wetland Soil and Filling Within a Floodplain. Flood um, so, uh, Sarah, did you have something to add on that? Yes, so I met with Bill Kenny out there a couple of weeks ago, just because I hadn't been out to the site yet to see what the violation was. Annette had been working on it, so I went out there we went over what the plan was going to be um, based on what the conversations he had had with the, with Annette and what appeared to be existing downstream. Um, I got the restoration plan from him this week. Everything looks like what we had talked about. I think they're, they're good with that. And the next step is for them to get a site monitor and post a performance bond, and then they can begin the restoration work. So my recommendation would be to continue the show cause hearing until such time that the restoration has been completed and then we can bring it back to you and we could remove the violation. Okay. Any questions, anyone? I have a question. Yep. I, I wasn't part of this, but it looks like it's going from October of last year with three or four continuations. I mean, is there going to be a, a, a maybe a more concise time frame for, for them? To yeah, do what so what had happened with all these continuations is part of it. Part of it was weather related. Part of it was changes within the department related that all just kind okay. of snowballed. Um, okay. But we have consistently been in touch with them. They really couldn't do much throughout the winter with the snow. So now okay. that now that we're back in spring, we can move forward. Okay, thank you. 
All right. Um, we have a motion to uh, continue the show cause hearing. So moved. Hey, it's Jerry. I'm on the line. Hi, Jerry. All right. Thanks, Jerry. So I'm moved. Do you have a second? Yes. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Jen, I, I just noticed uh, for the record, Brian McCann is here with us today. So he, Hi, I don't Brian. know if you mentioned him. Yes, I saw him pop up before too. So I got him in there. Thank you. Okay. The link was giving me trouble to get in. So I'm sorry about that. I was doing the same thing. I can't get in. I'm having an internal server. It was like the fifth time it finally worked. <laughs> I had that the Special last challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everyone for being here. Um, okay, Roman numeral five, Inland Wetlands Deliberative Session, um, A New Business, one, uh, fiscal year 2021-2022 proposed budget status. Um, the Board of Finance approved the budget, right? I think that's, that's as it was for us anyway. Anyone else have anything to add on that? Uh, I think it starts with the RTM tonight. So, yeah. so moving forward. Okay, from uh, number two, monthly wetland business date update for the agency. Be attached. A lot. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. um, I mean, mostly informational, but it's been very busy. We've already surpassed the total number of staff level permits that we had at the end of the last fiscal year. And, and there's been a lot of, uh, the full inland wetland permits as well. Okay. Thank you. All right, Roman numeral six, new application. Um, IWPA 2020-21-11, Town of Fairfield, Duck Farm Road over Mill River replacement of bridge 04953. Um, as per PA 96 157 the agency shall not hold a public hearing unless the proposal may have a significant impact on wetlands or water course or a proper petition is received or a public hearing is in the public interest. Um, this, this is a significant application. The staff recommends scheduling required public hearings for May 5th or June 2nd of 2021. What do you think uh, should we do it earlier rather than later, or do we know if May 5th is going to be busy yet, or any idea, Sarah? I would probably or go Megan. for trying to get it in in May. Yeah. Um, Megan, did you have any other thoughts with that, or? I agree. I think we can um, certainly get the get the staff uh, review done completed by then, and and push to get it completed by May, or okay. at least heard in May with the first hearing. Great. Bill, did you have anything too? I know you're involved in that one. Okay, you know, I, I appreciate the uh, the board or the commissions uh, trying to get this out uh, for the uh, May public hearing, just in case it does get continued. That gives us to, to June. Yeah. Uh, we have had a, a small core of uh, interested residents, so they may may attend that meeting. Uh, but we've been, you know, trying to give them updates as, as we go along. And um, I think uh, this would fit into the schedule. Uh, we are trying to get the uh, project, all the permits uh, done for this year so that we could do construction next year. Uh, when it, it is a local bridge, uh, a federal local bridge program. And so they, the state has to go uh, through a, an intensive review and then the bidding process. check all that inf information and then have the um, uh, eventual contractor submit all sorts of paperwork uh, involving um, Title VI, uh, uh, Davis-Bacon, you know, all that stuff. So uh, I appreciate it and uh, th this, um, <clears throat> this will uh, help the uh, bridge move along forward. So thank you very much. Thank you and I apologize for not uh, recognizing you, Mr. Hurley, uh, uh, our lead engineer. Thank you. <laughs> it, 
it, it's been a while. I haven't been before the commission in, well, <laughs> probably before COVID. So glad to yeah. see everyone. Yeah. All right. Do we have any other um, questions? Uh, if not, I'll, I'll entertain a motion to uh, uh, schedule for a public hearing on May yeah. 5th. Yep. Yeah. I'm in favor. So moved. Okay. I'll say. Second. Yeah. Okay. Luke. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, number two, IWPA 2020-21-12, Pavlis, 253 Reading Road, Assessor's Map 225, Parcels 37, Repair subsurf Subsurface Sewage Disposal System, within a regulated area. Staff recommends tabling pending legal notice and departmental review. Is that, who's that, Megan? Sure. Yeah. Um, yes, that's, that's, it's being received. This application is for a septic repair at 253 Reading Road. Um, in order to initiate the repair, there will be a, uh, the, the leaching field is going to be moved to the um, western side of the property and there's a wetland crossing that needs to take place to get to that portion of the site. The, the, the wetlands were delineated by Bill Kenny and there's the, it's in the Brownsbrook watershed so there's an 83 foot um, regulated area setback from the wetland. Um, we're looking at this as, it, as, as the, the, it, the infrastructure on the site as it currently exists is the, the, the road or the, the frontage um, provides direct access to the dwelling and then there's this wetland corridor in the Brownsbrook watershed. On the other side of the wetland corridor is a small barn. And so what would happen is there'd be a, a small wetland crossing that's currently lawn now. It'd be, um, it, there would be gravel placed on the, on the, um, on the lawn in order to gain access up to the, this um, open meadow area that exists in the western portion of the site. And then there'll be a force main with a 1,000 um, 1, gallon septic tank adjacent to the dwelling. So though there is direct wetland impact here because it's a lawn area and a necessary repair and it's a quite a small um, footprint of, of a project about 1,900 square feet, we're looking at this as not a significant activity, would not require a public hearing, but obviously would require a full permit from, from you folks to, um, to engage in, in the activities. Um, we'll be prepared with the full staff report at the next um, meeting, but at this point, I think that we could, um, our recommendation would, that, would, would be that it is not a significant activity. As well, I guess, just one other thing I could add is, is in addition to the, the, um, the placement of the gravel over the lawn, um, there are some opportunities with the restoration of that, um, that small access way to remove some non-native shrubs, multiflora rose and wing yuan spe specifically. And so what we could do is um, encourage some, some native plantings adjacent to the disturbance for the access way that might compensate for the direct wetland impact. Go ahead, Luke. I was just going to say that we uh, moved that we table it. It sounds cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Second. Okay. All those in favor? I don't even know yeah. where they are, what they're doing at this point. I wanted to hear the part about Terry's replacement. I'm not pretty sure that's long gone. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Um, Number three, IWPA 2020-21-13, Russo and Rizzio, LLC, 1143 Sasco Hill Road, Assessor's Map 239, Parcel 7, seven lot subdivision within a regulated area. Um, application type for staff, significant. Staff recommends scheduling required public hearing for May 5th or June 2nd. Um, I get a sense that we should get this on for May 5th. Am I correct? Yeah. 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 So you guys saw this last month with the open space offer. They still haven't settled on that. That's still before TPZ, but they are now trying to come in. They want to come in for the subdivision. Um, we think with public interest, there should be a public hearing on this. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Do I have a motion to, uh, Schedule the public hearing for May 5th. I'll make that motion. 
Sherry. I'll second. Sherry, that was you? Okay. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. All right, moving on to our public hearing, Roman numeral seven. IWPA 2020-21-10. Decision may be made if the hearing is completed or the hearing may be continued. The original 35-day public hearing time frame to complete the hearing ends on May 12, 2021. Um, a 65-day time extension may be pro provided by the applicant. So a further public hearing continuation to October 14th is possible. Uh, potential continuation date is May 5th, 2021. Um, Town of Fairfield Bridge replacement within town right of way in the general vicinity of 65 Commerce Drive at municipal boundary of the city of Bridgeport. Replacement of Commerce Drive Bridge over Rooster River, also known as Ash Creek, within a regulated area. Staff recommends approval with conditions. And, and this is Mr. Hurley, I believe. <coughs> Bill, you're muted. Muted there, Bill. Sorry about that. Let me start over. Um, we had Michael Fanning, uh, who was on in the. Uh, I saw him in the very beginning. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see him now. He he was going to do the uh, presentation, but in a, in a nutshell, um, hopefully he'll get back on. But um, the. Uh, uh, staff had uh, sent uh, me these uh, specific conditions of approval for the permit, and uh, we we were in agreement with that, and uh, I signed uh, for that. There was only one slight modification, and that was that um, the original one had said no fill within the 100-year floodplain uh, elevation, and it should be no net fill, um, and that was uh, corrected. And uh, signed off on that. Uh, per per um, WMC, who is our consultant, a 217 uh, cubic yards of excavation and 178 cubic yards of fill. Uh, so there was a net decrease, just so that everybody is aware of that. Um, I still don't see him on here. Uh, has me a little bit worried. <laughs> I don't know what uh happened uh but in, in the other uh, thing i can tell you is um we are actively uh participating in discussions with the uh, budding property owners on this project um the project will be done in in two phases uh the car dealerships uh were invited to the meeting uh, i do not know if they are in attendance or not uh but i'll be also meeting with them tomorrow discussing if they had any further questions uh, from tonight's uh, presentation. Um, <clears throat> the uh, bridge is uh, scheduled for uh, the, uh, we're at semi-final design. And so uh, the final design usually takes a couple of more months. And then uh, uh, we will either put the project out for um, bid in the uh, fall or uh, the following winter. Uh, for most likely construction uh, in the spring next year. Uh, we also have held utility meetings and um, they may be able to do some of the work uh, ahead of time as, as well. So um, as far as I know, they were to the, uh, to the project and uh, I'm here to answer if anyone had any specific questions. not a whole lot of room to work in that area. How, how are you going to, I guess you shut the road down and, and park everything in the road or how's that going to work? Uh, yeah, we're, we're still uh, in um, the final discussions for that, uh, but both the businesses have definitely expressed an interest in keeping the road open. Uh, so what uh, the proposal is uh, to have one way traffic going uh, eastbound. So you'd go from Fairfield to Bridgeport. And then if you wanted to go back, going westbound, you would have to take a detour um, that uh, goes uh, mostly through Bridgeport, hits Route 1, and then comes back down. Um, 
the traffic patterns uh, and uh, the city of Bridgeport and, and uh, the engineering department here in Fairfield were in agreement with that was the best approach. And by quote, closing down half the road, it keeps the businesses open and provides some of the storage. We will have to seek easements and that's another reason why I'll be meeting with them uh, tomorrow. Uh, for uh, additional storage areas in the uh, car, um, you know, dealership uh, parking areas or overflow parking areas. There'll be, uh, I, I don't have it specifically, but I that a minute hello. Of control. Uh, hello, uh, this is Mike Fanning from WMC. Okay, great, Mike. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what happened, but uh, glad to have you. I was just giving them a little recap on a little bit of the phasing and that uh, the town did sign uh, the standard conditions uh, for approval. But um, now glad to have you back. And uh, uh, I guess you're here to answer any questions that the commission may have. Uh, unfortunately, for some reason, I could not connect. I uh, had a presentation and, and <laughs> unfortunately, no one will be able to see it. But we'll be happy to answer any questions. Is there anything you wanted to say otherwise? or, or? I'm not sure what Bill has said, so I'm reluctant to say the same thing again. Uh, I'll, I'll do a quick recap, Mike, uh, for, for your benefit. Uh, I, as I said, uh, the town had signed the specific uh, conditions of approval uh, that there was no net fill within the 100-year floodplain. Uh, I gave them uh, the numbers that uh, WMC had provided. Um, okay. 217 cubic yards of excavation and 178 cubic yards of fill. And Correct. there would be no significant impacts. And uh, the road would be uh, one way traffic. And that's pretty much where I. I, I, I uh, well, I would just add a couple things. Sure. Hydraulically, you know, this whole area is within the 100-year floodplain. Uh, the, so it, there's not a lot of benefit to widening the bridge, even though we did. We did manage to reduce the 100-year flood elevation by approximately 0.3 feet through the bridge and downstream to the Amtrak bridge. However, that still means the whole area floods. So there, there's not a great deal of benefit there. Um, the, the entire project is within the floodplain, uh, as Bill may have mentioned. Um, watercourse impacts, the permanent watercourse impacts are 123 square feet because the new abutments are outside the existing abutments, it's actually the entire bridge is being built in what was land. It, it doesn't touch where the water was. So as far as wetland impacts, there are zero permanent wetland impacts. And uh, of course, those are all coastal wetlands. Yeah. Now, one thing that's a little interesting, excuse me? Um, one thing that's interesting here, because there there was coastal vegetation found above the coastal jurisdiction line, which is 5.2 feet in Fairfield, uh, there's a, an alternate regulatory rule for for deep, where you go one foot above the one year high tide. So the actual regulatory elevation here is 7.3 feet, which is exist. It's more or less the road elevation. Anything lower than that is regulated by deep. We we've already filed what's called a certificate of permission with them for a permitting of this, and they will coordinate with the Corps of Engineers on what permit we expect to do an SV. You know the the easy core permit, um, but that's a decision that Deep and the core will agree on in uh, private meetings. Anyone have any questions? No. 
And I'd also say the way the scope of this job was, we also had to file in Bridgeport. So mm -hmm. later this month, we have a public hearing in Bridgeport also. Megan, did you want to say anything? Sorry, quick, quick with the mute. Um, we had submitted the staff report to the to the engineer department as as Bill described, and have we have consensus on that. So uh, you know, we're satisfied with the with the design and with the with the project as conditioned, and um, have no further comment at this time. Okay. Thanks. Sarah, is there any member of the public that needs wants to say anything? Has anyone called in or? Um, there's a couple members of the public that look like they're on, but I don't know if anyone wants to say anything. Um, they can unmute. They should be able to unmute and do it. So, yeah, I don't think so. Okay. Okay, I think. Um... Anyone, any further questions or are we ready to vote? Well, if we're ready to vote, I, can I have a motion to approve? Do you have to close the public hearing? Yes. Oh, yes, you are correct. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Do I have a motion to close the public hearing? Move. Second, you got a second from Jerry? Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Are we ready to vote? Do I have a motion to approve? Motion approved. Who's that, Luke? Yes. Yeah, then Jerry had his hand too. That was a second. Okay, discussion? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Roman number eight, other. Is there anything else for Inland Wetlands that we need to talk about? I don't think so. All right. All right. Do I have a motion to adjourn the Inman wetlands portion of this meeting? Move. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We're going to move into the Conservation Commission meeting. Um, this is the Fairfield Conservation Commission meeting of April 7th, 2021. Special meeting agenda. Um, we all we have the same members. All seven of us are here. Um, Roman number one A. Request of Bill Kenny Associates on behalf of Lawrence G. and Megan M. Foley for revised conservation easement at 926 Hull Farm Road. Is that you, Ed? Uh, yes. Um, I haven't finished my staff report. This was a special meeting. meeting. We received some email uh, from, from the neighbors. Uh, so I was going to wait to see what. Uh, what they can input into it before I come up with a formal recommendation. I have to say, I didn't yeah. really get a yeah. sufficient chance to fully review it, to be honest. Um, we do have Brian Carey here who can explain a little bit about the proposal to you. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. So the uh, 926, the applicant uh, for Lori, uh, Larry Foley, uh, if you look at the map that was submitted as part of the package, some of the uh, photos that were submitted, 
that the uh, the uh, conservation easement that was filed in the property in 1978 actually goes through the house and covers uh, the large portion of Great Brook that runs through the property. In uh, September of uh, 2019, during the massive rainstorm we had, they actually had a failure of the on-site dam um, that caused uh, the pond that was on the property to uh, disappear, obviously. Um, the dam is not registered with the state of Connecticut. Um, time which the applicants to do um they're just looking to remove the easement from that portion of the property so that they can do future site planning um of demolition and removal of the house without having the uh conservation easement run through the existing house and the pool area um, they're not there's there's not a proposal right now for redevelopment of the site. What they want to do is uh, at, at at the time being is remove the easement and western station into plan for the redevelopment of the house um and eggs of great brook which i think i did submit photos so if you go out to the site which you're allowed to do you'll see that most of the area through great brook is uh two to one slopes it's, it's had significant erosion um throughout the property which they are hoping to come through and submit in the next month at, at, it's uh, is approved so that they can start um, some bank restorations uh, or a uh, future application. Okay. Thanks, Brian. Um, yeah, I do want to mention before we go any further that we did receive all of us an email from uh, the neighbors. A, a few of the neighbors, so I want to state on the record that we received communication from them by email today, and also um, that uh, a commission member received a phone call from a neighbor. So I want to state on the record that um, this agenda item was not discussed um, with anyone, um, but we were, there was outreach. Um, so, uh, Ed, is your recommendation that we table this? Is that what you're saying? Can't hear you. Edward. Ed, you're muted. Ed, you're muted. Okay, I'm unmuted now. Okay. Um, out of fairness to the neighbors, I would say that it'd be best to table it for now. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't foresee any large amount of information that comes in, but there may be something that they can input. And I have a quick question. And I have a quick question. Can the state remove the dam with the conservation easement in place? So this so the dam is not so the, the state con registered dam dam of state register right? uh, um, dam state is not re registered. Uh, the dam is not registered as state. Uh, Dams. Um, it's owned by the applicant. And their intention is to remove the dam completely as part of any future application that comes in front of the commission. Okay. All right. You really break mine. It's hard to hear you. Yeah. Daphne, I, th I think to your point, though, there was language in the conservation easement, and maybe you can touch on this, Ed. Um, wasn't the language in the conservation easement specific to maintaining the dam? They were allowed to maintain the uh, developed portions of the property, the residence pool, et cetera, and the dam and pond uh, with permission of the Conservation Commission and the activities. Uh, the original conservation uh, easement was put on the records uh, having to do with the uh, inland wetland permit 
number 113 uh, back in 1977. And I believe the uh, the thinking was is to place a conservation easement over uh, the structures so they would not be expanded without uh, uh, going through hoops to get it done, for lack of a better word. That permit was issued for the construction of a two-car garage. So was the dam so, included? Dam included? So, yes, the dam was uh, specifically cited in the conservation easement. That easement is in the package that was provided by uh, William Kenny Associates. Yeah, okay. yeah. So the, the applicant, so the, the applicant, so the applicant, Applicant's idea was uh, to uh, r remove the easement, refile the easement, so that they could actually put together a site development plan that could be brought back in front of the commission, with, so that they would at least access part of the property um, where the existing house redesign the be a uh, prohibitive for them to do so without re uh, refiling the easement in the uh, manner that they're they're proposing. I'm breaking up. I can hardly hear. Yeah, it's unfortunately. Um, thanks, Brian. Um, thanks, said I. Um, you know, to be clear, we we can. Uh, take this item up without input from the public, but I, I would, I would um, agree that it, it, I would have no problem tabling this. Um, does anyone else have anything to, to add? Yeah, I would just, I, I think we need to table it and talk about it next okay. month. This is, this is a pretty big deal and we haven't had a whole lot of time to look at it. So I think in fairness to both the applicant and any other parties, we need a little more time. Yeah, I, I, agree agree. I, just, I really hadn't a chance to look at this. We are okay. absolutely. Do we have a motion to table this and can, uh, no further date? I'm fine with that, and I can respond to any questions that uh, may come up. Um, if it can come up, respond to any comments. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. We have a second. Second. All those in favor? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Okay. Roman numeral 2B, request of Faith Sheehan, Sheehan of Hofstra University to use the Lake Mohegan open space for filming on April 9th, 2021 for 14 hours. This is Friday, right? Is that the night? Yeah, I received it on Monday. Uh, Someone's so been uh, trying to get a turnaround on it, trying to get in contact with people to nail it down a little bit, little bit more than the woods. Uh, I think I included uh, and what went out, I don't know if the uh, commissioners have had a chance to look at it, was an email uh, train that I've had with, uh, I'm looking at uh, her name now, uh, I guess one of the professors from uh, Hofstra. And uh, they've nailed it down to the northwest side of the lake uh, with a picnic area for steam, uh, trucks and so forth. Uh, she says they don't need it closed to the general public, uh, so I don't see any problems with it. We're having some road work done down there tomorrow, but hopefully it'll be done. Um, if not, we'll deal with it. Can't see why they can't go ahead with it. Why is it, it, the public? Has this ever been done before? We've had filming done in Lake Mohegan. Okay. Is what I remember from a couple of years ago. Um, but didn't they require like a certificate of insurance or something? I, I think I recall correctly. Oh yeah, sorry, oh, yeah. Well, been, but, and that's going through the Office of uh, Economic Development. I guess is handling these permits now. Okay. They would also have this 
delegated to staff uh, for approval of these permits. Uh, we really don't have a lot of staff to do that right now, but hopefully in the future. And there's a fee involved. They pay a fee. A daily fee. I'm sorry, I can't. I didn't hear you. They pay a fee. I'm yes, still not getting it. Do they pay a fee for the permit? Uh, yes, there's a fee structure, and that's, uh, I believe we sent out the uh, document this afternoon. The commissioner's one by was, email. One was two, 250 if it's an independent film, and yeah, we don't 500 if it's a big budget film. Big budget film. <laughs> I'm guessing it's the prior. It's the prior. <laughs> Anyone have any comments or, or concerns? I, I guess all you need is a sense of the commission that that um, to move forward on this. Yeah, that would be great. Did they mention how many people will come in? I believe it's five uh, and maybe nine crew. They're not doing a hit piece on Fairfield, are they? I hope they're going to cater it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> I think it's fine. All right. I don't have a problem with it. Anyone? Anyone? Uh, do we have a sense that we're okay with it? Yeah. I'm fine. Fine with it. Fine with it. Okay. Roman numeral 1C, request of Ramsey W. Goodrich to apply aquatic herbicide to a pond within a conservation easement at 495 North Cedar Road. Okay, this is one I brought up briefly under other at the um, last Conservation Commission meeting. Uh, it's a man-made pond. Basically, it's a sink for the neighborhood and everything else for all the nutrients. And they just get cycled in the pond. There's not a lot of flushing going on. So about midsummer, they usually have a thick mat of rotting vegetation in the middle of the pond. They would like to control it with a herbicide application. This is usually this is regulated by the state. Uh, they defer to the local uh, <clears throat> agencies when there's a, a restriction, such as the conservation easement that is on property. Uh, I would say to let, allow them to go ahead. The herbicide, and they also wish to put a circulating pump in. Um, technically, it's not a permanent structure. There's a couple anchors and a going out to it. They're all over town, and we really, wetlands agencies always had a hard time trying to regulate these things. Uh, it's really a plus. I don't know how well they work to alleviate the problem, but uh, time you oxygenate the water, it has to be better than it was. They also wish to come in for an uh, inland wetlands permit in the future to do a more full habitat uh, remediation. Uh, as yet to see what type of plants they'll come in with then. So I recommend. And did they happen to mention? Did they happen to mention? I'm sorry. Sorry, it, this is Dabney. Um, did they happen to mention what kind of herbicide they were using, or if they were permitted to use? Glyphosate or some other herbicide. It's listed herbicide. their application. Listed in their application uh, for the Phragmites, they it. may end up using. Yeah. yeah. There's a number of other things though that they also use uh, that would be in the state application, which I don't think I sent out to the members. The listing of that. Typically, the glyphosate isn't used in the in the full aquatic. It would be more of the um, al al the vegetation along the banks. So, but I don't have the. I'm not. I haven't seen the application, so I can't provide you. But glyphosate would not be. It's not a. It's not typically it dispersed into the water. That's not where you would use it. Well, it would. It would leach into the water. Would it not? Would it not? 
its residence time is fairly uh, short. Yeah, and it's considered down. to be highly sorptive. So, Ed, are we approving this, or are we just getting a sense, getting a sense of the commission that the application can proceed? We're not approving it. I would say approve it so we can go forward with the state. The state is going to require a letter uh, from the commission or the department concurring with uh, the application. We're not we're not approving the, the pump or anything like that. Or are we doing all of that tonight? Uh, I thought we approved the pump. I think it's you know. I don't think it's that obnoxious or anything or noxious. And that way they can see too uh, what oxygenating the water does later on their plans for rehabbing the area. This pond is uh, really shallow from what I understand. It's just building up uh, detritus on the bottom of it. Do we allow for the aquatic herbicide or are we just giving them the pass to then get the blessing from the state it's a state permit they usually issue them it's being done by a professional company licensed professionals Any other questions, anyone? Nope. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Uh, can we? Be, I want to be a little more specific. What are we approving? So, if we can put it in the in the motion, what what exactly we're approving? Then I think that we can we can vote on that. Jerry, I'm make a motion to approve to apply aquatic herbicide to a pond within a conservation easement on 495 North Cedar Road as proposed in the agenda. Okay. And I mean, the you know, pump? second and then have discussion after that. I think we should do it that way then. Do you want to add the pump to this one motion? Or you want to have a separate motion for the aeration pump? I, I, I would have, I, I, I mean, I, I would add it to the motion now. And if we want to second it and discuss it and then change the motion, we could always do that. Okay. So I'll, I'll second for the two purposes, the, 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 um, Aquatic Outside herbicide and the aeration. Pump. Now, if anybody wants to discuss it or change it or whatever. Discussion. I, I would like to know what kind of herbicide is being proposed. Uh, for the record, glyphosate is used in aquatic uh, environments all the time. I, mean, it's, I know that it's usually used on land, but it is used to control Phragmites. And it can have negative effects. So I'm just interested in what kind of herbicide is being proposed. I, I know it's state approved. I thought that was in there. Is that correct, Ed? I don't know if the name of it's in there. All these materials are state approved. Uh, I went through the application. I can't cite what exact materials you're using, but uh, I noticed pointedly that they're not using glyphosate in the aquatic application. Okay. We, I had talked out there on site with them and there is phragmites along the perimeter that they'd like to control at this point. Usually that entails glyphosate. It would be a formulation that would be approved for wetlands. It wouldn't be Roundup, it would be what's called Rodeo. It doesn't contain the... <laughs> in the Correct, uh, and, and you wouldn't put that in at this time of year anyway. You'd wait for the Phragmites to flower before you would apply anything like that. And yes, to clarify for you, Dabney, I certainly, it, Phragmites is one thing, but I was speaking about like the actual pond, like the oh, milfoil and yeah. hydrilla and things. So those, that's where we just wouldn't yeah. use, that's where we just wouldn't see the, the, the glyphosate in that application, but certainly, yeah, point noted. Well, I well guess said. that's that's why I was asking I if, was if we are just giving our blessing and, and whether if, because just because the state says it's okay, doesn't necessarily mean that it's okay. I was just trying to get some clarification on whether or not the state's permit supersedes um, 
our decision or if we are just giving a blessing to move it forward. I think we're giving a blessing to move it forward. I mean, there's two different, there was discussion that they're only asking us for a blessing and then there's discussion that we're approving. So the whole, the whole thing. So, but the state, I believe, could override if we say no, right Ed? Uh, I guess they could. I don't know if they would. Mm-hmm. So other than Phragmites, what are the big uh, problems in this particular site? The other problems were uh, pearly pond weed, uh, Eurasian milfoil. They have uh, duckweed has been a real problem for them there. Okay. Static. And I'm I'm sorry to jump in here because I don't I don't know if you well, how much input you'd, you'd like to have on this one because obviously Ed is handling it so so well but the one the one point I might um, clarification point I might make is typically that aquatic the a per, the state permit for aquatic application does pertain to nuisance and noxious weeds in an aquatic system it doesn't necessarily pertain to the phragmites eradication along the bank of the pond I would think that those types of things could fall into your the inland wetlands purview that's typically how I see those um, those activities separated. Um, you wouldn't you wouldn't that 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 state permit is it does not necessarily include bank vegetation, from my understanding. Um, I, Ed, but I forgive me if I've um, You're very true. Uh, muddled up your it does not okay. That's just what I put out out there, and that was through uh, approval under an order. Right. So, that very so great. Thank you for that clarification, Megan. That was helpful. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Was, 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 when was the last time they've asked for this? Has this hap does this happen often or do we know? This is the first time it's been done. Okay. They only purchased a property, I think, in the last two years or so. Okay. They haven't been there that long. Okay, any further discussion? Are, are we ready to vote? We know what the motion is, right? Mm -hmm. okay. All right, all those in favor? No. Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Roman numeral two, other. Is there any other other? Not at this time. Nothing, Sarah, right? No. Okay. Nope. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Ed. Thanks. Good night. Thanks. Good night. Thank you. Good night. All right. Good night.